I mean, I think it's criminal with him being drafted so late. ADP of 133. I mean, this guy has two Pro Bowl receivers. He's going the 12th round in sleeper drafts, and that's unbelievable. This could be the steal of fancy football. He's probably, like you said, the biggest sleeper. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Catching a Vibe. I'm your host, Drew, and today I'm joined once again by the voice of fantasy football, Mike Anderson. How are we doing, Dad? Good, good. Excited to get this going. I'm excited to see who you got as a sleeper. So. so we've gone over quarterbacks, running backs, receivers, and tight ends, and today's topic is our top five sleepers this mm -hmm. year in fantasy football. And there's right. There's a good selection, I think. Sure. You yeah. Know, I was looking through mock drafts, what ADP some guys are, and I I like my list. I don't okay. know about you. Good. Yeah, I like my list too. Um, like you said, it's hard to narrow it down to five people. Mm -hmm. I think we got a little expanded list there. We got a couple extra names for you. Yeah. So um, one of my extra guys I'm going to go with is. George Pickens from uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. I just think it's his year there. Now they finally got some quarterbacks there that can throw the ball to him. <laughs> right. So he's such a deep threat. He counts for so many big yards down the field. Um, that's kind of, you know, he, he's a 93 target kind of guy, 63 catches, 600 yards. I, I think he's going to, make those numbers come up quite a bit. They're going to look his way. He's their number one there. So mm -hmm. he's one of my picks. Yeah. I bet he's very excited. Kenny Pickett, Tugla Pickett is out of there. Right, yeah. Okay. One of my honorable mentions, I have Jerome Ford. I mean, he's RB1 right now for the Browns till Chubb comes back, and that's a big question mark. Like, mm -hmm. what are we going to see from Nick Chubb mm -hmm. this year? So I think a safe bet, right. Jerome Ford goes in like the 12th round in fantasy. Why not take a shot at him? Oh, I mean, he's proved and showed that he could produce. Yeah. You know, as a Look at the Jets game running back. last he put year. Up big numbers. Yeah. He had two touchdowns that game. He looked solid. I mean, he would make plays and for the Browns last the, year. The question is, too, I mean, when they bring Chubb back, I don't think they're going to give him the full workload right. his first game back. So they're going to ease him back in. So Ford's still going to hold value for most of the season. Right. You know, no one knows if Chubb's fully going to even come back. So it's yeah. hard to hard to say. I know he's running and looking good, but Ford did. He's a capable back. I yeah. agree. It's, it's a good pick. Um, so mine, I mean, he's he's being drafted early, and I, I kind of I'm high on him. Is Isaiah Pacheco just for the you know him being on Kansas City's offense? They're going to be explosive. They're going to move the ball downfield, and I think he's just going to be a in red zone end zone kind of scoring guy. So I think he's going to have a big year. So I put him in there. Now, he's being drafted early, so he's not really a sleeper, but yeah. he's a guy that I'm excited about. I'll just put it at that. Gotcha. And my last honorable mention guy, I have Deontay Johnson. Uh, Deontay's out of Pittsburgh. He's with the Panthers now. I think it's best for him. He's the, I think he's the number one for the Panthers. Adam Thielen's, what, 45 wearing adult diapers now. <laughs> so I like Deontay's <laughs> upside. Uh, doesn't have to graze hands, but he's one of the most underrated route runners. This guy can be everyone. He just has to focus in on the ball. Right. And he's right. getting drafted right. in the tenth round. He's right. a guy that gets at least eighty balls a year. Yeah, he's a, he was a huge target share yeah. guy at Pittsburgh. I mm -hmm. mean, they looked his way the whole time. And like you said, the knock was uh, stone hands, I guess you yeah. want to call him. He dropped the ball a lot. So, but no, I, I think he's in line to have a, a good year for and you. They're saying Bryce Young's looking night and day better than last year. So, oh, Bryce I'm sure Young. another year in. Yeah, right. Sure, sure. So, the start to five, this is in no order for me, but uh, I'm going to go with the QB position. I'm going to go with Matt Stafford. 
I mean, I think it's criminal with him being drafted so late. I mean, he's at ADP of 133, QB 19. I mean, this guy has two Pro Bowl receivers on his team with a good running back. I think they're going to put up a bunch of points. I think they're going to score a lot. Biggest concern is him staying healthy. You know, he started out slow last year, and then he finished the season on fire. His last six games, he put up 1,700 yards. That averaged 283 a game, 15 touchdowns. So, I mean, that's big time in six games. I think uh, the Rams are going to, you know, put up some big numbers on the offensive side. I just think for where you're – he's probably not even being drafted in most leagues. Yeah. I think he could easily, if he stays on fire the way he finished last season, be in the top 10. Yeah. So I think he's, that's why I have him as a sleeper at the QB's position. Okay. I'll go my quarterback. I'm going Dak Prescott here. I did a mock draft, and Dak went in the eighth round. I mean, he's, he was in the six to nine range for quarterback. And last year, he was top three in fantasy, and he was the MVP runner up. Yeah. I mean, for him to go that low for quarterbacks with the Cowboys not having a running game this year and he's going to throw the ball a shit ton, he could finish his QB1 this year, yeah. honestly, if everything <laughs> goes right for the Cowboys. Right. So I think he would be the steal of quarterbacks. Oh, I think that he's probably, like you said, the biggest sleeper. You know, he's being that late drafted. I mean, yeah, you're right. I mean, he is... He could be QB1 finishing at the year, mm -hmm. end of the year. He is he is a good pick, definitely. Definitely a good sleeper. Uh, next guy for me is going to be at the tight end position. I'm going to go with Jake Ferguson from Dallas. Yeah. And like you mentioned, if Dak's that hot, I think Jake Ferguson's going to be a recipient of that because yeah. I think defenses are going to attack C.D. Lamb, take him out. Who knows when he's going to get signed? I mean, he might be rusty to start the season. So mm -hmm. Dak's going to look for somebody else. He's going to definitely focus uh, uh, getting the ball out there. They're going to drop back and throw because they can't run the ball. You know, he's another guy. He's tight end number nine off the board. He's ADP is 86. So uh, he had a 17% target share, uh, nine end zone targets. I just think that. He's gonna. He could finish up the season being a lot higher than the number nine tight end. Mm -hmm. You know, he could easily be in the top five. Yeah, no doubt. I'll go my tight end. I'm going George Kittle here. I mean, Kittle has been a top five tight end the past five out of six years. He got hurt one year, and he's going as tight end eight in mock drafts and drafts in general. And with the Ayuk dilemma. If he gets traded, that frees up 75 catches and 100 targets. And I bet a large portion of that goes to Kittle if he's traded. So I'm looking at George Kittle's upside. I think if Ayuk is gone, we're going to see less of the boom and bust. We're going to see more consistent to boom Yeah, yeah. with Kittle. I, I agree. I, I definitely agree. Kittle is in line to not have those busts games he's going to have a lot more boom games mm -hmm. especially if they do lose yeah. IU. so good pick uh so my next guy is going to be a running back Najee harris Najee. he's another guy that everybody overlooks never drafts him real high uh just puts up solid numbers mm -hmm. he's a big bruising running back he's 6'1 240 i mean he's a big running back that they can jam up the middle Plus, he got good hands. He comes in the league, he was catching the ball. So the last three years, he averaged 250 touches over 1,000 yards each of the last three years, seven rushing touchdowns. He averaged right around 48 uh, receptions, 280 yards, two receiving touchdowns. Those are good numbers. Those are solid tier Top tier running back numbers for this guy. I mean, so yeah, I know you got Jalen Warren there and everybody's hyped up on him, but they still keep going back to Harris because he's he establishes a good run game, plus he's got good hands, and now they got better quarterbacks there. I think he's in line to especially where he's being drafted at. Uh, he's at ADP of 76, 
RB22 coming off the board. I think he's a little higher than uh, the 22nd best running back in the league. I think he'll outperform that. So I have him as a good sleeper. Yeah. My running back, I this could be the steal of fantasy football. I'm going to Raheem Mostert. Uh, everyone just thinks of on the is going to take all the work. This guy scored 21 touchdowns yeah. last year. I don't think they're just going to kick him to the sideline and be like, hey, putts, watch right. A-Chain run the ball here. He's going in the eighth round. I wouldn't draft him as my running back one because you have to worry about A-Chain and them committee-ish. Mm-hmm. But for the eighth round, man, the 20 running backs taken before him with this offense being that explosive, yeah. why not take the chance on right? Most are, yeah, he's in his 30s, but, you know, I can see him dropping off from 21 touchdowns. Mm-hmm. But he yeah. could still, for his ADP, absolutely crush. And he could be a good RB2, RB3 for your fantasy team. I Yeah, I, I like Moster too. I mean, he he's a big play-capable kind of yeah. guy. He is a fast running back. You know, the only knock is he's a little – has some injuries, but – I agree. I think he's a, a great pick. I, I I mean, he's on an explosive offense, like mm-hmm. you said. So he's going to be sniffing that end zone again. Yeah. I, I, you know, he might not put up 20 touchdowns. That's hard for anybody to right. do. But it, even if he drops back down, he still could easily finish up as, a, you know, a top 10. Yeah. Because he finished, what, second at the end of the year mm-hmm. in fantasy points scored. So, I mean, nobody looks at that, but he's he, – had good numbers right so um my next guy i'm gonna go with uh t higgins um this guy last year was being drafted in the second and third round early you know he he was an early receiver being picked uh he got banged up a little bit burrow didn't finish the year uh just i think that with Burrow being back for a full season, and he's going to be fighting to get that big payday because they franchise tagged him. I think he's really going to try to put up some big numbers. In the 21-22 season, he averaged over 100 targets, 70 catches a year, over 1,000 yards each of those years, and six TDs. So this guy puts up number one receiver numbers. So he big play capable. Um, so... I like him. He's being drafted at ADP is uh, 50, number 29 receiver coming off the board. I definitely think he's a lot higher than that. So mm-hmm. I, I like T. Higgins. That's a good one. So my receiver, I'm going to Romeo Dobbs. He's going the 12th round in sleeper drafts, and that's unbelievable because I think this guy is receiver one for the Packers. <laughs> yeah. And – yeah, there's a lot of options with the Packers. They have a really great young receiving court, but I think he's Jordan Love's number one guy. Him and Jay Love were, were finding their stride towards the end of the year. Mm-hmm. He dominated the Cowboys in their playoff game. He had 150 yards and a touchdown. Plus, I think this Packers offense is going to be legit. They're probably going to be in contention for maybe the number one offense in the nfl this year top five i I don't know if i'd say number one but definitely a top five offense and he's been hyped up since his rookie year Mm -hmm. aaron Rodgers was praising him his rookie year and i think this could be his breakout year like it took Devontae Adams a couple years for him to become the star he is and maybe romeo dobbs is the next packers True number one. Yeah, I, I, he was my favorite Packer receiver, and yeah. I, I, I agree with you. I, I think he stood out, and I thought he was their number one. Like you said, I agree with that pick. So my last pick is going to be Curtis Samuel. I just think that he's going to be in line for a big year going to Buffalo, where Buffalo has so many targets freed up because they got rid of Diggs and they got rid of Gabriel. And uh, so I just think he's such a good utility back when he come into the league, he was a running back yeah. and they moved him to a receiver. 
So he's one of those, he's kind of like a Debo Samuel kind of guy where he's like a utility player. Uh, so I think he's going to be good. His ADP is 104. You know, uh, he's draft. He's the number 50 receiver coming off the board. I think he can way outproduce those numbers with Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bill offense because they're looking for someone to be their number one. I think he's got the most experience as the receiver on the team. So uh, Joe Brady's there. Uh, he was there. He's their OC at Buffalo. He was there with him at Carolina when he had his best year. So I think he's really excited to be there, those two together. Last year, I mean, he put up some pretty decent numbers, even though it was kind of everyone looks as a mild year. He had 91 targets, 62 receptions, you know, so he had a great year, 613 uh, receiving yards and four touchdowns. I just think the Buffalo Bills are going to throw a ton, and I look for him to be that slot kind of guy in the open field and make something happen. Mm -hmm. That's a good pick. I like Curtis Samuel, one of my favorite Buckeyes. But anyways, back on track. This is my last sleeper. I'm going DK Metcalf. DK Metcalf is getting drafted in the fifth round. He's usually in the 20 range for receivers. Um, DK hasn't finished outside the top 20 since his rookie year. Uh, he's got a new offensive coordinator who's from Washington. And, you know, the Huskies threw the ball a shit ton last year. Um, just from a talent standpoint, DK is 6'4", 230, and runs a 4'3". He's just very consistent. Last year, he only scored less than 10 points twice last year in fantasy, in the fantasy season. Mm -hmm. um, I love him as a receiver two flex play this year. Who knows? With the way they're projecting the Seahawks offense to be more passing, he could be a top 10 fantasy receiver this year. Mm -hmm. And him going in the fifth round, mm -hmm. I think that's just a hidden gem right there. Yeah, I think DK is a good pick. Big, big bodied receiver. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, his question is he gets a little banged up through the midseason, but uh, he's a good, good receiver. I like him a lot too. I think he's he definitely could be in line for a big season. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So. so that was our sleepers, everyone. Uh comment down who we miss or who you like this year. Yeah, let us know your sleepers. I, yeah. I definitely would like to hear other people's opinions on this. This is big. This is what everybody's out there looking for, mm -hmm. is trying to find that one sleeper that may be a league winner for you. Yeah. You know, so that's that's hopefully these guys might help you out or maybe you suggest someone to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Comment down. Uh, make sure you like the video, subscribe if you're new. We'll see you next time. Peace.